welcome back to the quarry garden and as you can probably tell I'm back in the white garden today because this video is all about hydrangeas and this particular hydrangea the Annabelle hydrangea look at the size of those blooms they're just huge probably the size of an English football gorgeous and the plant is just full of blooms and this is an arborescence hydrangea and that just means it flowers on new wood that stems like these that have grown this year this is all this year's growth within about five months it's reached I would say nearly six feet in height but this particular hydrangea has got a really interesting history if anyone wanted to look into it it was discovered way back in 1910 by two sisters out horse riding in a town or near a town called Anna in Illinois in the US but it wasn't actually released commercially as a cultivar until the early 1960s so there's a lot of um, history between when it was first discovered and then but it is an interesting story interesting family who discovered it too anyhow plant particulars it will flower in full sun does like full sun but it's probably wise to plant it somewhere um, that will give partial shade in the hot midday sun I actually get that here um, probably from about two or three in the afternoon but certainly if you live in a hot climate you'd be have to be wary of where you actually or be more selective as to where you plant it because it could droop with the heat of the day likes moist soil or moist conditions and um, will tolerate most soil types too acidic alkaline it will tolerate most soil types will grow to about seven feet within about five years but this is only a two-year-old plant and I'm certainly heading towards six feet as you can probably tell um, the blooms will grow to about 10 to 12 inches in diameter and I think I've probably got that with these blooms they're that huge in the spring or late I would say late winter, early spring, before it starts to um, show any growth, I would cut it back to the ground. I cut it back for the first time, and I was quite nervous about it last year. I cut it about 80% of the stems back down, right to the ground. But I did leave, I think it was only two stems, and I left them about 12 to 18 inches, just in case it didn't come back. I just wanted to guarantee the fact that I wanted it to return. I didn't want to lose it if I had a harsh winter but it bounced back without any problem. Once the growth started to show, I fed it just with a rose and um, shrub feed, granular feed. I've only fed it the once. In hot conditions, you do need to keep it well watered. And that's what I had to do when we had the heat wave recently. I just watered it every night. Other than that, I don't water it at all. But we do live in a climate which is not too hot and we do get an awful lot of rain. As I mentioned, it's in a sheltered spot and that's something that you'll need to consider because if the rain, um, and once it does rain, and we get a lot of it here, um, gets into this blooms and the blooms become very wet, they become very heavy and the stems can actually snap. This particular one, which is the original Annabelle hydrangea, does actually have quite strong stems, but they are... Um, known to have weak stems too and you can probably see some of the ones at the bottom which are dripping a little bit more are not as sturdy the stems aren't as sturdy one thing that i've done um, to, to successfully have it stay upright the way it, way it is i use hoops as the plant grows during the season so the first hoop i use and i'll show you the hoops that i use in a moment I think it was about two feet off the ground and I just put the hoop around the whole plant as it grows and then as it grows larger I add um, a taller hoop probably one that's about three or four feet um, and then when you get it fully grown as this one is um, to guarantee that the stems don't snap I discreetly add some um, canes inside the shrub and I just tie some of the stronger stems up just so they don't flop or snap in high winds and in heavy rain so I think that's about it gorgeous so now I'm going to take some cuttings 
So this is the Annabelle that I'm going to take some cuttings from. And that's because this is a new um, cultivar of Annabelle, but it's called Strong Annabelle. And it's just because it's got sturdy, strong stems. So when the flowers get large and they're wet in the summer months, they don't actually flop and they won't bend. It'll stay upright. Never grown this one before. This is new to me. I planted this one last November. So it's a very young shrub didn't prune it back, I left the original framework for it to grow from and um, it's done okay. Obviously the flowers are a lot smaller because the harder you prune back in the late winter, the bigger the blooms that you'll actually get. So you can see these blooms are a lot smaller than the one on the other side. But then again, it's only been in the ground about nine months. Next winter, when I prune it back, end of winter, I will leave some of the original framework just to see how it actually grows next year. I'm kind of experimenting with this one. How much to cut back, how much to leave, what size the flowers will be, how big the plant gets. Anyhow, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take some cuttings and you need to identify um, stems that don't actually have a flower on the end of them or a flower that looks like it's going to form. And there's a few on here. So I'm going to take some cuttings and I'm going to grow some more of these gorgeous plants. So you need to identify a stem which doesn't have a flower head or flower head forming. I must admit they're pretty few and far between in this shrub but um, I've got one here so you need to cut it just below a node and that just a node is basically where the leaves the leaves come out. So there's one and put that to one side. Some people put them straight into a plastic bag just to keep the moisture because you don't want to lose the moisture will um, evaporate pretty quickly once you've taken the cutting, but I'm going to plant them straight away so I'm okay. So I'll just put that down. And then I'm going to take another one here because I'm fortunate enough to have two on this one. So again, I'm going to cut it just below a leaf node. So I'm going to go around and take as many as I can and then I'll show you how I pot them up. So last year, I tried um, growing hydrangeas from cuttings and they were successful, much to my surprise, because I've never done this before. I've never grown hydrangeas from cuttings. And these are the cuttings. I think I took about 10 and I was 50-50. I've ended up with about five and this is them. And they're the original Annabelle hydrangea cuttings. And the medium that I used, the growing medium, was some old spent compost from some old um, pots that I had. And I mixed it with 50% um, perlite. And this is the mixture that I use. And I'm going to try again and use that again this year, same as before, because I had some success with it. But what I'm going to try is also just growing some cuttings from um, perlite. So I'm going to fill this seed tray, just a basic seed tray, plenty of holes in the bottom, quite a deep seed tray. But I'm going to fill that with perlite. And then I'm going to obviously moisten it down. And I'm going to try and grow some cuttings in pure perlite. I'm going to experiment and see how it works. So I'm going to soak and down the perlite. I want to give it a good soaking and obviously any excess water will just come out the bottom. And now you can see it all running out. This one I leave till I actually put the cuttings in. So this is the Strong Annabelle cutting. It's quite a long one, so I'm actually going to get two cuttings out of this. So I'm going to cut just below a leaf node. I'm going to take that one to one side for now. I'm going to cut off the bottom leaves. Put that to one side. I'm going to take off the next um, set of leaves as well, because that is too much green on there and the cutting will just lose too much moisture. So then you're left with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in half these top leaves. There's just too much on there. So I'm just going to basically cut them in half like that. And then I'm going to cut just below the leaf node again. And that is my cutting. So there's the cutting. Some people use rooting compound. I haven't on this occasion. I don't have any. I didn't last time and it worked without it. So I'm going to give it a go. So 
just going to make a space with a pencil, don't have anything fancy like a dibber, and I'm just going to place the cutting in. And there you go, that is it. So hopefully it's going to work. So I did manage to get one, two, three, four, five cuttings which I've added to the um, perlite and two which I've added to um, perlite and old compost. Let's see which one works the best. Obviously you need to keep them uh, the moisture in. So for this one, I've got one of these seed tray covers. So I'm just gonna put that on the top of that. And probably every, about every few days, I'll just check the moisture levels and I'll just miss the actual um, cuttings themselves. Similarly with this one, I'm going to water it first. My trusty watering can. And then I'm going to add the old trusty sandwich bag. And this is all about keeping the moisture in. Just going to put it over the top. Just like so. And then pull it tight like that. And there you go. How good is sandwich bags? You can use them for everything, can't you? So the last thing to do is to put these two um, lots of cuttings somewhere shaded. Need to keep them out of the direct sun, otherwise they'll lose too much moisture and they won't just wilt and die. So I'm going to find somewhere to put those and I'll just keep a check on them. And it takes about six to eight weeks for these cuttings to root. Never used this method before, so it'll be interesting to see how it works. This one here, obviously I've tried for the very first time last year and it worked because I've got some lovely young plants. And I'm going to pot these on and I'm not going to plant them out until next year. Well, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon.